Welcome everyone, day two in Philadelphia. Believe it or not, we've actually still got most of the main touristy stuff to see. I kind of focused more on the history side of it yesterday. Today we'll be doing some of the more Instagram-worthy photos people take here, admiring some of the public art, and whatever other shenanigans we run across. We're in the world-famous Love Park, named for that piece of art you see there. Some of the cool buildings towering over us. It's actually quite a bit smaller than I thought. There's two layers of letters, probably uh, about as tall as a man. Not that crazy. What is pretty crazy is Philadelphia's City Hall. Look at this freaking building. This is the City Hall. When it was built, or started being built, in 1871, it was built to be the tallest building in the world. But by the time it was finished, in 1901, 30 years later, it had been passed by both the Washington Monument and the Eiffel Tower. Way to go, guys. Some more cool artwork. I'm trying my best not to film the random people that are here. This isn't the nicest part of town, as you can see here. Got the Spanish language counterpart to the Love statue. Right across from this Cathedral Basilica. It's a cool Catholic church. Very nice fountain display here, just kind of in the middle of downtown. Turtles and frogs. <laughs> Almost Disney-esque. Other than the naked guy. There's old George up there on his steed. Big old statue right in front of this. Philadelphia Museum of Art. Otherwise known as the Rocky Steps. This was the place where that famous montage of Rocky running and doing his one-arm push-ups and all that stuff ended as he runs up the steps here and pauses to celebrate and soak in the view. Good fall. And what a view it is from up here, right down Main Street. Figuratively, it's actually Benjamin Franklin Parkway we're looking down. The city loves their Ben Franklin. That is for sure. Perhaps even more than they love Rocky. And there are certainly plenty of nods to Sylvester Stallone's character. Another historic site here in Philadelphia, the Eastern State Penitentiary. This operated as a prison from 1829 all the way to 1971, six years after it was declared a National Historic Landmark. And they do offer tours, actually, though I'm not going to have time to catch it today. And that's because I still got to check out this area. We're south of Philly, checking out Lincoln Financial Fields is where the Eagles play. Super Bowl champions not too long ago bested Tom Brady and the Patriots. Pretty memorable game. And just across the street at the Wells Fargo Center. And this is, this pulls double duty. This is where the Sixers play NBA and the Flyers NHL. Sixers are actually in the playoffs right now too. Yeah, all in one place, man. You got the Eagles right behind me. Got the Sixers and the Flyers over in that stadium. And then right up here we got where the Phillies play. Pretty cool looking stadium. Can't say I've ever really looked into it too much. Being an Angels fan, I kind of follow the American League more, pay more attention there, but Philly's got a cool stadium. Just south of downtown, like I said. Nice view of the skyline though from here, not too far. Yeah, clearly not a game day today. These streets are all pretty deserted, but gotta imagine much of the year. There's a lot of chaos here. I mean, we got four huge sports franchises on one block. I don't know if I've ever seen that much in one area. And Sixers are actually in the playoffs right now too. Last night they had a game. They were about to sweep the Wizards and ended up losing it. They're still up three to one. Puts them in a good position, but it's pretty cool to catch Philadelphia on not only a sports night, but on a playoff night. It's pretty cool. A lot of the bars were making noise and having a good time, which I always like to see are only about 90 minutes from the next stop. That's one thing I do love about the East Coast. These cities are just packed in together. We have to drive like an hour or two. Coming up, there's gonna be a pretty good stretch. 
some long driving on the way back to San Diego. But for now, nice little bite-sized chunks. Not mad at it. Okay, I decided to stay one more night. This place is cool at night. It's all still open, too, which kind of surprises the heck out of me. Much more peaceful laid back at night. Just kind of hanging out in front of Independence Hall. Brought a little something to puff on. Just kind of enjoying it. look inside the hall pretty cool basically got this whole place to myself right now it's not even that late I think it's like 9.30 feeling a little spacey kind of digging it oh that looks way cooler at night it's all illuminated you could barely see it in the daytime it was all like glare and people in the way kids making noise in the background. It's awful. Hanging out inside the original White House. This is that house site that George Washington lived in while he served his term as president. We saw it earlier in a previous video, but again, that was at the daytime. And this is a lot better at night. Here's the original foundation of the house, and again, it looks way better at night. I'm surprised they don't advertise this. Like, come here at night. It's kind of better. I've just been hanging out inside this house. It feels weird. Like, this is where George Washington, like, walked around, met with people, ate his meals, went to the bathroom, ordered his slaves around. It all happened right here. What you've been hearing in the background are all these TVs that are playing. Right now, they're just kind of these ambiance shots of what the inside of the house might have looked like, the music they might have been listening to. I mean, it's pretty cool. It really does set the scene, kind of picture what might have been happening here. There are still a few people wandering around the area, but I've had this little sight to myself here for a good 10 minutes. Just kind of feeling the vibe. The music and stuff definitely helps. I can't lie, this is infinitely better at night. During the day, it was just noisy. It was hot too, but mostly just the house like crowded with like families and kids and just nighttime hours are a much better way to explore this. My name is Christopher Shields. I'm a Muslim slaves. Oh, here's a cool thing I didn't expect to see. One of my favorite historical characters ever, Toussaint Louverture. He's the self-freed slave in Haiti who overthrew the French colonials and then kicked Napoleon's ass who was hell-bent on having a Western Empire. Freaking slave from Haiti completely changed the course of world history. Talk about playing the hand you're dealt. It rarely gets taught in most history courses too. It's kind of a shame. But look up the Haitian Revolution. Pretty big deal. It was the first time ever slavery had been abolished. And they did it themselves. This guy's talking about how Washington skirted Pennsylvania law to keep his slaves longer than the six months that the law stipulated. He certainly did. He'd move them from state to state. Pretty fucked up, but... But I will say, it doesn't make him any less significant to the course of U.S. history. Anywho, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.